able to uh, talk today about um, something that I'm really um, passionate about. It's nice to be asked to talk about something that you really believe in. And um, my own personal association with the Doctor Monument really goes back um, to 20 years ago when I was a museum's development officer for Argyll and Butte Council. And um, I first came across the Adopt Monument scheme then, and uh, the, the groups were working in um, Argyll, a number of sites, including Saddle Abbey down in the Qatar Peninsula. But of course, it wasn't until 2004 when I uh, took up the post of um, director with Archaeology Scotland um, that I was able to really get more involved in the scheme and uh, my continued involvement and the involvement of Archaeology Scotland and the board of directors and staff um, continues uh, to this day. So uh, let me first of all take you back to uh, 1990. Um, it was the year Glasgow was the first ever European capital of culture. Um, Margaret Thatcher uh, was still Prime Minister and uh, Mr Bean first appeared on our TV screens. This was also the year that we started a conversation with local groups and societies about a national Adopt-a-Monument scheme. Um, this conversation led to the idea for Adopt-a-Monument to be written into the future strategy for the Council for Scottish Archaeology, which is what we were at the time. And we produced a document uh, that year called A Way Forward, and in that document it was stated that Adopt-a-Monument is initiated. It doesn't say actually who came up with the, the name for Adopt a Monument. I'd be interested to know if any, if any of our long standing uh, board members uh, know any more about that. Um, the plan was then that the scheme will be developed over the next three years so that by the end of 1995 there will be at least one adopted monument in each region of Scotland. Quite an ambitious target. So the first pilot project was at uh, Carden Tower in Fife, and uh, this project was really led by uh, Peter Yeoman, um, and Peter uh, was on the executive committee of Council for Scottish Archaeology at that time. And Peter is once again on our board of directors, uh, and uh, I'm sure he may well be in this photo, but I'm not really that sure if he is. Um, this was a partnership project with, uh, with Fife Council, and with the Workers Educational Authority um, group um, called the Corey Centre Group. Um, it was a challenging project. Um, there were a lot of groundworks required, um, a car park uh, was put in, and uh, it really, um, I think, set the scene for some of the issues around the early days of the scheme in terms of the amount of work involved uh, and the amount of money involved in some of these projects. Um, bearing in mind that at the time this really fell on, on Peter's, Peter's uh, uh, head to, to take this forward. Um, and the, our newsletter um, of that year um, say, says, the project is an expensive one. And the, site, the site requires a long fenced footpath, some landscaping and a small lay-by, as well as other illustrated interpretive boards. Other schemes may not prove to be so costly, but it will probably take just as long to establish. Nevertheless, we are keen to hear from local societies who might have a site that they think they might, might be appropriate for the Adopt Monument scheme. The Carden Tower project, um, the group uh, went on to win a British Archaeological Award that year for this project, and it, it was opened by the then Chief Executive of Historic Scotland, Graham Munro. The other 90s projects, um, there were quite a few of them. Um, Brainport Bay is a solar, solar alignment in, in Argyll, and uh, the project there was to restore the uh, stones which had been vandalised and knocked over, and uh, to create a trail. Uh, the Saddle Abbey project, I'll talk a bit about in a, in a little while, um, it was uh, to look at the medieval carved slabs down at, at Saddle, um, and there were a number of other projects in Argyll at this time. Um, and there was lots of interest from other groups as well, including 
Cramond, Dunkeld, Cromer, Stirling, Clackmannanshire, Dura, and Lewis and Harris. Um, despite saying that we wanted ado an adopt monument project in every region of Scotland, there does seem to have been quite a focus on Argyll during this time. Um, and there was also plans to involve uh, young archaeologist groups uh, in, in getting involved in adopt during this period too. One of the more successful projects in the 1990s was the project at Ardnadam, um, just at Sandbank, uh, just outside Dunoon. Um, and this was, again, a partnership with a local society. It was uh, reinstating uh, the site, doing conservation and um, doing a trail. And this, the Ardnadam group, uh, we revisited again uh, in the 2000s. Um, and it's, it's still a, a very active and successful site. All the projects in, in the early years had strong links with established archaeological and local history societies. And during this time, uh, we, we funded a feasibility study um, of what to do with the Saddle Abbey stones. Um, this, of course, was our scheduled monument. And again, the partnerships with uh, ADOPT and uh, what to do with scheduled sites is a very strong theme and is a, has been continued to be a strong element of the work that we do. So the early years we were consulting with local groups. Uh, we launched the Cardin Tower project. There was various projects in Argyll. In uh, 1994 the Arden Adam Trail opened. 1995 the Brainport Bay, the solar alignment was finished. Um, and in 1996, the Butte Group took on uh, conservation of the Cairn Ban, uh, uh, Cairn uh, on Butte. Again, the, the Butte Group, a well-established group, uh, really kind of knew what they were doing and uh, were pretty much left to their own devices to get on with that project. Um, there were cracks beginning to appear in the terms of the support that, that Council for Scottish Archaeology could give to this project. It was becoming increasingly difficult to resource it in terms of staffing, and uh, the demand was just outstripping what could be done. We come then to the rather lean years of uh, 97 to 2005. Um, despite interest and many discussions with local groups, Really, we didn't take any forward take forward any projects during ninety seven and ninety eight, and then in nineteen ninety nine, uh, we sort of quietly sort of dropped the dropped, dropped the project from our um, our annual report and our strategy. One of the issues, as I've said, was really about the suitability of projects. Although there've been many discussions with groups, um, these projects were either thought to be too expensive or not quite doable. Um, and so for a number of reasons, nothing much happened over these years. There were, of course, other priorities for the organisation and other opportunities were taken up um, and we got involved in sort of different directions. The five years between 1999 and 2004, it doesn't mean that ADOPT um, wasn't doing anything. The, the guidelines were available and this idea for community-led stewardship didn't go away. The Council for Scottish Archaeology continued to promote its guidance and also during this time Historic Scotland produced a version of their similar guidance called Making a Difference um, and this was widely consulted upon but again this didn't really get taken forward at, at this time. But then, more encouragingly in the 2004s, um, I'm delighted that uh, when I took up post uh, in 2004, I was strongly encouraged by Ollie, who's with us today, to look again at ADOPT. And to be honest, I remember thinking, I've got too much to do, I can't possibly take on any more. <laughs> but you did, you did encourage us. And uh, the board really sat down and had a look at this again. Um, and we were generously funded by Historic Scotland at that time to, to do a report and a consultation on whether we could relaunch the scheme. This was another um, series of consultations and discussions and uh, with thanks to Mel Johnson of CFA Archaeology um, we 
published a consultation report that year. I remember one of the comments uh, was by somebody was, oh, don't call it Adopt a Monument, that's a rubbish name, but we, we stuck with it. Um, so in 2006, we launched the second pilot scheme. The, um, we appointed a, an officer, Helen Bradley, and um, Helen came into post and got cracking on a number of really um, interesting projects around Scotland. One of the key successes was our partnership with the Scape Trust at this time. And uh, as you can see from the map, uh, we did a lot of work jointly with Scape. And that was such a valuable uh, link there between um, Archaeology Scotland and, and the Scape Trust and local groups. Um, we other notable successes were the restoration of the Victorian well at Paul Dew, just a Logie Cold Stone there, um, the conservation of an Adam and Eve stone um, at the Lyon Churchyard in the Scottish Borders, and the Sandwick site, the Arden Adam site, was revisited and uh, uh, revamped during that time as well. The um, the scape. The, the Scape Trust uh, projects you know, included some really interesting initiatives um, such as rebuilding uh, an eroding cairn and then letting it wash away again into the sea. Um, and uh, the, um, the project at, at Bressy, which attracted um, a, a, a lot of publicity at, at the time um, and is still an ongoing project. So that brings us to the current phase of ADOPT um, and we were ably joined by Phil Richardson um, who took forward uh, another development plan for the project and helped us secure a major grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund and our partners in Historic Scotland, now Historic Environment Scotland which helped us to deliver the current phase of the, the five years that, that we're here to celebrate today. During the five years, we will have worked with over 70 groups, and that includes 15 outreach projects, uh, which are attracting new and different audiences to Scotland's heritage. We were joined by Cara, uh, and together, Cara and Phil have been a fantastic team who have achieved so much, and they'll be telling us more uh, shortly about what they've been up to. So really, just to sum up, um, we could argue that we've had uh, 25 years of community-led stewardship, um, given that there were a few years when not much happened. Um, but we've listened and learned and there's a current research project ongoing uh, at the University of York um, looking at the impact of um, community-led projects such as Adopt a Monument. And that includes the social impact as well as the physical impact. So we, we're interested to see um, what the results of that are going to be. We could not have done it without the support of Historic Environment Scotland and the Heritage Lottery Fund. And, and many other funders, including the LEADER programme, which uh, with the, the, the Brexit um, implications looming, it's causing us some concern for the future. Adopt Monument is such a fundamental part of what Archaeology Scotland are about. And we know there's still a need for this scheme. Uh, and part of what we're going to be doing next is looking at how we might make this project more sustainable in the future and I hope you'll help us on that journey. Thanks very much. <laughs>